In this demo, we are going to use Fusion HCM Analytics to investigate attrition, payroll, and DNI challenges with recommendations for improved employee experience. Let's start with this workforce overview dashboard consisting of both out-of-the-box and customizable KPIs across HR and finance. Payroll costs are increasing, while top talent retention is trending downwards. Female gender ratio is falling short of target as well. Let's analyze if there's a correlation. Through ML-based diversity analytics, we can uncover diversity trends by gender across the different departments in the enterprise. We see that there are several anomalies in the areas of turnover, salary, and promotion within the female population in the sales department. And most of the anomalies are among the first and middle level manager population, which are mostly employees in the initial years. Looks like the sales department is at the center of all these challenges. Let's investigate further. Analyzing the distribution of levers, that is people who have left the organization, we confirm that a majority of them belong to the sales department. The top reasons for leaving the organization seems to be a combination of higher pay rate, better opportunity, and work-life balance. Applying pre-built analytics, the forecasted turnover trend also predicts an increase. Let's investigate these top reasons for leaving, starting with the teams within the sales department. Here, we see that most of the sales teams have the highest attrition. The comparison numbers also show that the base pay for some teams is below market. Going by the absenteeism numbers, we can see that the top performers have availed very few leaves and have been steadily leaving the organization. And the trend is forecasted to increase as well. We can even convert the visualization to text-based narrative for an easier read. With these insights, we can deduce that most employees have been working over time, thus accounting for the higher payroll costs. These teams have lower female gender ratio as well. Does that mean more women are leaving the organization? Let's see. The percentage of men and women in the organization has not evolved during the previous five years. In addition, compared to very senior women with a seniority level of around 15 to 20 years, the number of women with a seniority level of less than five years is decreasing. Thus, there is clearly a challenge in retaining women during their initial years at the organization. Let's now look into opportunities for women employees. Even at the same performance rating, men seem to be paid more than women. In the areas of promotion, the majority of people promoted during the previous three years are men. The span of control clearly shows that male managers tend to have more direct reports than women. When we finally look into potential, we can see that there are as many high and medium potential women as men. So in spite of all these reasons, women are not being promoted. Our immediate action plan is to identify and retain these at-risk, high-potential women who are leaving the organization in their formative initial years. How do we go about this? Let's first filter by seniority level, gender, and potential. Now we have a list of all high potential women who have been in this organization for less than five years. From here, we can apply sentiment analysis to the comments provided by these employees during the performance reviews to identify the most at-risk women employees. These are women who are high potential but have not been promoted. We can now work with this group to advance the career mobility plans accordingly.